Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Yanvi. The Good coolest morning. person in the world with those shades. Wowie. Nope. But it is another beautiful day in Athens. We're just headed to the Archaeological Museum. But first, we're just going to stop over for some coffee and a gyro because I need some breakfast. Let's go. All right, first stop for our caffeine fix is Taft Coffee Shop. I heard about it. I've heard it's a really good coffee shop. Let's go. So me and Yambi are a bit of a sucker for a good coffee, a good cup of coffee. But we found this cafe called Taff. This coffee shop is a very artisanal coffee shop. They source all their beans ethically. It's a very fancy shop. You know that they respect the art of coffee making here. My sister also informed me like their espresso machine is a manual espresso machine, which is, uh, I don't know, I don't make coffee, but I'm sure it's much harder to make coffee manually. So I'm sure they like, they really know, they really, they've really nailed the art of coffee making here. I'm very excited to taste their coffee. I got a soy latte. I already tasted it, but it's like the most unique coffee I've ever tasted. I don't know how to describe the flavor notes. It's very unique. It's not bitter at all. It's very smooth. Wow. Wow. All right, you got their flat white with their rosebud single estate blend. Oh. Ooh, it's good coffee. It's bitter, but it's like a complex bitterness that's not foul at all. It's very nice, very complex. Oh, that's, uh, that's just some good coffee. Uh, great way to start the morning. All right, we are all caffeinated, so I'm just gonna go for a cheeky gyro stop before going to the museum. All right, just a little cheeky year stop here at Lefteriskopolitis. Uh, just on our way to the um, archaeological museum. Apparently this place is really good as well. They they specialize in their spicy, spicy uh, gyros, which I'm very excited about. I just got one to myself. Incredibly excited. Also, you could see them when they were grilling it. When they were grilling the skewers. They put the pita on top of the skewers just, for, just so it could soak up all those glorious juices. That is an alpha move right there. I am so excited for this gyro. Oh, look at this incredibly beautiful bundle of joy. This this incredibly soft pita, it's got some onions. I've got, I got everything in it. Onions, tomatoes, double beef kebabs, and a sprinkling of that spicy powder that they have. Oh, this looks magnificent. All right, I am so excited for this. Mm. Oh, man. That is just... Awesome. Wow. This is just an experience. And the spicy sauce, it's not too spicy. That magnificent spicy kick, not too not too overpowering. And the beef, the grilled beef has such an incredible juicy, tender, grilled, smoky flavor. And those veggies, this is the perfect contrast, you know, to make you feel a bit better about yourself. The fact that you're having veggies with this mound full of meat and oils and juices. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh. I was telling Yambi about that soggy bottom. The juices have already spilled into the gyro wrapper. Oh, yeah. But we'll save that bite for later. Mm. There's no glorious ending here. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what? You know, I'm just gonna one bite this last one. With the, the soggy bottom juices. That was just glorious. That was just, you know, it's just a perfect pocket of joy. Oh, it's just those things in life that just make everything better the second that you have it. Mm. So this ultimate comfort food, ultimate street food here at Lefteris or Politis. Oh, incredible euros. That was a pretty good cheeky euro stop at Lefteris or Politis, but next up is the National Archaeological Museum. So the National Archaeological Museum at Athens is one of the most important museums for archaeological finds with a special highlight on ancient Greece obviously and the Mycenaean period, the Neolithic period, there's so many priceless artifacts here, they're so beautiful. So we're just going to walk around and just read and see what stories these artifacts and sculptures have to tell. Okay, 
I didn't even realize it was here, but the Antikythera mechanism is on display in the bronze collection of this museum. This is big. This is big. Long story short, the Antikythera mechanism was considered the world's first computer, and it could calculate um, like moon cycles and lunar astronomical cycles to very accurate precision. So this is a replica of what the Antikythera mechanism looked like. It's a gear. It's a complex set of gears over there, housed in a wooden box. And these over here are the remaining pieces of the Antikythera me mechanism recovered from that shipwreck they recovered in the 1900s. Also at the bottom of the museum is a very nice vegetated courtyard. Incredibly beautiful plants and some sculptures adorning the covered walkway. Some from the Antikythera me uh, mechanism shipwreck. Very eroded, but they're still very beautiful. Boy. All right, that concludes our visit to the National Archaeological Museum, a must visit when you're here in Athens. I don't care if you're a history buff or a classical buff or not, it's just that interesting in general. It's just an essential visit when you're off to Athens. But now it is lunchtime, we're just gonna take the bus to a place that I can't pronounce because it's all in Greek and doesn't have an English name, but that's okay. So we're just gonna take the bus and let's eat. It's lunchtime. Oh, hello friends. You may be wondering why we are in this uh, very inconvenient position for us, but that's because this awesome Greek tavern is completely packed. We came a bit late because we took a bit longer in the museum and in the morning, so it's 2 o'clock now for lunch and it's absolutely packed. There's so many seats reserved on the actual dining area, so we couldn't get a seat inside, but that's okay. We're here for a meat feast regardless. We just got a few uh, barbecued Greek meat goodness items that made no sense. I'm pretty hungry right now and I cannot wait to feast on some Greek meat goodness. Um, exceptional circumstances call for switching to the iPhone. Um, there's no there's no way the camera can fit in this confined space. So uh, we're just gonna eat like this and take you guys along with us. Starting off with this sausage. It looks super charred and just porky meaty. Oh. Oh. That, that's top tier. That is so porky. Charred, fatty, tender. Honestly, the sausage is just insane. Mm. Wow. Next up, I'm gonna try this uh, barbecue, this flaky, luscious. It's, it's, all, it's like coated in, its, in the oils. It looks so flaky and just fatty. And, oh. Look at this. Oh, my bite. Her bite. Oh, that's just fatty. Porky. You got some herbaceous that's going on. Like, I think the whole thing was just sprinkled with oregano. And we also sprinkled some of that Greek lemon uh, all, 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 all over those meats to give it that zing and that herbaceousness that we like. Okay, next up is this very weird looking interesting thing. I believe it's called kokorensi. It's like intestines that's wrapped. I mean, it's like a uh, liver and some organs wrapped around some intestines that's like the stringy bits that you see on the outside. So this should be interesting. Mm. Mm. Okay, that is unlike anything I've ever had before. It's like organy, but not too so to be to that I'm put off by it. But this has a very unique texture. It's got those like stringy bits of intestine. This is a treasure trove of organy goodness, that's what this is. Greek salad break in between all that meat. I'm officially recharged. So we thought we ordered everything. The tenderloin came. Oh my goodness, this is an absolute meat feast. Okay, next up is a pork tenderloin. It's sprinkled with oregano on the outside. It's got some good char marks also on the outside. Let's taste. It's really nice. You know, it's your basic pork tenderloin. That's cooked really well. It's not, it's like a slightly tough, but like very flavorful. I'd probably pair it with like the, the ketchup and the, mu the mustard that they gave us. Just because it's a little bit bland. But it's still pretty solid pork tenderloin. Hit me with that mustard. Hit me with that mustard. Yes, thank you. Don't cook too much. You're welcome. Oh, one bite of that. Why? Why not? Oh. Every one bite I do, I dedicate to Mark Williams. 
is the highest form of flattery. Yes, nice save. Yeah, anyway, that was a pretty epic Greek meat feast. Oh, I'm just, I am satisfied. Oh, wait, you can't even see me like, patting my tongue. <laughs> but I also apologize for the less than ideal filming angle, but we had to uh, make do with what we got. Literally, like, my the only space is there. I was like, okay, the camera can't really fit anywhere. So, yeah, it was like, every everything was to the side. So it was not the most ideal of filming conditions, but I hope we still gave you a good glimpse of what this restaurant is like. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna slip into my hole, just go into a deep coma, a deep meat coma. And after that, we're gonna head to the Panathenaic Stadium. We're just gonna bust there, let's go. Something very special about constructing here, anywhere in Athens, especially if it's underground railways like the subway, you might come across stuff like this. Look at that. Archaeological sections just by the metro station. This is why building projects in Athens need an archaeologist on site, because you know, you might find stuff like this on site. That's just extraordinary. That just goes to show how ancient the city is. Okay, cool. Uh, you may be wondering, this isn't the Panathenaic Stadium. Why are we in a forest? of sorts, but uh, change of plans, we decided to just go straight to Mount Lycabettus, which we were going to do anyway. It is considered the uh, the balcony of Athens, if you will, because of its uh, stunning views of the country, oh, the, well, the city. So we're just going to go up there, we're walking uh, uphill, clearly not dressed for the occasion, don't have any active wear. Uh, it's a dirt track all the way up, I think it's a 200 meter ascent, so we're just going to uh, try to catch the sunset, get a view of the city, a beautiful view of the city. And and yeah, we'll see what happens first, the sunset or if I die of uh, exhaustion before that. Because I just had a coffee and I feel very hot and I'm sweating. That's okay. Let's go up. You know what I've been really liking about Greece? Very obscure, but you're uh, yes, you're, you're cacti and on the hill, but you know, like, please let me know, are they, are they an invasive species? Because I'm pretty sure they're only like native to North America. So, you know, if you don't mind them, then yeah, they're pretty cool. But if they're like invasive species or something, then boo, cactus, bad. 
All right, only a few steps to go, but the view is getting amazing from up here already. And uh, I believe this is where we're going. There's a, there's a church at the top of the hill. Still a long way to go. That was an incredibly beautiful sunset at the top of Lycabettus Hill. 360 views of beautiful Athens. We're just gonna head down Lycabettus Hill and on to the next food stop. Okay, we're back and we walked to the city district and we were craving some seafood, so we went to this place called Atlanticos. Looks like a very uh, seafoody, vibey place. Got some uh, <coughs> flags at the top of me, some uh, neon fish signs. Very nice place. Uh, just got some little fried boys and whatnot, some seafood. Sticking to the seafood theme, obviously. So let's eat. Uh, I'm not a drinking man myself, but you know, when I'm overseas, you gotta try the local, the local poison. This is oizo. It's a very traditional Greek drink. Chris Morocco check. Very. Did I get star anise? Yes, star anise. That's the. Yes, that's the predominant aroma here. Ooh! It's very like cloudy and. Mm. That is, oh, yeah, that is very Star Anise forward. It's not bad, not bad. Alright, starting off with a beautifully charred. Charred? Alright, starting off with a beautifully charred spicy pepper. Why would you eat the whole thing? <laughs> no, like the seeds, the seeds, the seeds hit the back of my throat first. I was like, ooh, that's spicy. No, it's like, <laughs> oh. please do not mistake my uh, my suffering for lack of heat tolerance. I saved. That was a nice pepper, very sweet, very charred. Mm. The, the heat level, very nice. Yes, you got what you paid for. Spicy, sweet, charred peppers. Okay, gonna get some of these uh, these shrimps. Ooh, this is some some simple fried little shrimps. Mm. Oh, yeah. You can never you can never go wrong with fried little shrimps. Mm. I just love how you can eat everything from head to tail. Everything's just so crispy that you can eat it all. The, the batter is light and not too greasy. Oh, perfect. Oh, I just love this part when like when you've eaten all the prawns and all that's remaining are all just the. The scraps, the fried scraps, the antenna, the heads. Oh yeah. Ooh. Mm. That's just that's just like prawn crackling right there. Just pure prawn flavor, yes. Alright, hi again. It's me, Eliana, the official cod correspondent. Anyway, <laughs> we got some fried cod because you know we had to do it. It's a pretty meaty and chonky boy. The, when I cut into it, the batter looked very crispy, so I'm very excited. We also asked, uh, we also opted for the garlic sauce, which is like potatoes and like garlic. It is called scordalia. It is basically garlic mashed potatoes, yes. but it's so good. Yes, it's basically garlic mashed, mashed potatoes. All right. Mm, very tender, super crispy uh, batter. Very moist. I feel like the cod flavor is it like the best that I've had just because like I think it's not as salted but it's still really good like it's still cod so it's gonna be delicious let me try a more meaty piece just because I kind of mushed it because it's so delicate oh yeah there we go perfect and the garlic sauce enough to enhance it but not enough to overpower Okay, this is some beautifully grilled sea bath. This is bath. Just gonna try to open up this, this, ooh. Oh, ooh. Flaky, check. Looks quite moist as well. Nice, uh, nice grill marks. Oh my goodness. Yes, there's the, that's the stuff. The moist, juicy, fatty insides. Uh, I might keep that to myself. Uh, I tried to get most of the bones, but if I, well, we'll see if we get if we run into any boat. Oh yeah, that is 
just pure, sweet, clean, green. I was about to say green, but that was a, that's an amazing tasting fish. It's so it's like it's so delicate and sweet. It's so simple, but it's just the it's the freshness and like the flavor of the fish that really carries this. Oh yeah, yeah, and I, I and I also love like fish skin as well. Mm. Oh, and it's slightly crispy here. It gives it that almost fatty dimension to it. And when you sprinkle it with some on, uh, onion, I'm getting my words mixed up. When you sprinkle it with some lemon, it gives it that perfect acidity to you know excite the taste buds a little bit very nice tasting fish oh i completely forgot we got this fish but here are some uh, beautifully fried tiny anchovies you know you can never go wrong with some fried fishy goodness oh yeah mm. i mean that has a spot also another godlike combination just lemon and fried fish in general just lemon and fish in general it's a it's another match made in heaven like, I'm sure 99% of you have tried a fried fish, a small fried fish of some sort. And if you're that 1%, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Get some small fried fish. It's like one of the tiniest joys of all. Look at this little boy. They gave us an after dinner mandarin. Very nice. You know, after all these fried stuffs, a fruit is all I needed. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was so sweet. Wow. Like, it's just a Mandarin, but like, wow. <laughs> Alright, that was some delightful seafood here at Atlanticon, but now it is dessert time. Yeah, baby. Okay, we're walking closer to Central Siri to a place called Nancy's Sweet Home. worked up a secondary sweet appetite. We are here at Nancy's Sweet Home in the very heart of the Siri neighborhood. It's in like the main intersection where all the cool restaurants are. Uh, we just got a few uh, Greek desserts. Uh, also got some coffee, my third coffee today. I don't know if that's good for me, but we'll see about that. <laughs> okay, third coffee today. Another Greek coffee. Oh yeah, that, that hits the spot. Even this late at night. I'm gonna try this Cunefer. It's like this like stringy dessert that's almost similar to baklava, but it's got a ton of syrup. I don't wanna. Okay, let me just get a fork here. The table's very wobbly. Look at that. It's just stringy, syrupy goodness, and get it with that uh, ice cream. There we go. Oh. Ah, that hot and cold combo of the ice cream and the conifer. It's a bit hot, which I really like. I mean, warm. It's a bit warm, which I really like. It's so syrupy. And like, lo all those like stringy strands just give it a unique texture. That is a lovely dessert. That crispy texture as well. It's like, there's just so much of it. It's just like, very nice. Next up is this gooey, almost super dense sponge cake-like ekmek. I'm not really sure what it's made out of, but it's definitely gelatinous. Even got some blueberries, which I will add. There we go. Some uh, dense cake ekmek action. Oh yeah. Mm. It's really nice. It's so dense and gooey. It's almost like a gelatinous rice dessert. And again, the hot and cold combo of the ice cream and the ekmek just hits the spot. I just, love, I just love desserts like this, honestly. That's so nice. This is a pretty massive baklava with a white chocolate praline in the center. You know, it's like, it's your typical massive baklava with a, a heaping of syrup. It's just so flaky and just all those folds from the filo pastry. Mm. Oh man, it is a coffee. Oh, perfect. That was one rich baklava. Right. Baklavas are already sweet, but when you put that white chocolate praline, it's just sweetness overload. If you just want to nearly kill yourself with sweetness, then this is the baklava for you. Still pretty solid. Uh, fam, we've bitten off more than we can chew here. Uh, we may have, may or may not have bought too many desserts here. Uh, I am about, I am on the brink of having diabetes. 
I'll get that checked. No, I won't. I'm, I, I, I haven't gotten to the doctor in years. I may have a stroke in the morning, but that is, that is okay. So I am not gonna eat this, but yeah, uh, we'll see if I'm alive tomorrow. <laughs>